What is up, guys? I uh, hope everybody's having a great weekend. We are here to jump into the first scrimmage for Florida State and Mike Norvell. Scrimmage number one is in the books. It's a wrap after last night. The guys hit the field at 7 o'clock last night and around 8.15, 8.30. Uh, I believe that everything was supposed to begin inside Doak on Bobby Bowden Field. But, you know, there was some nasty weather going around in Tallahassee, so it seems like they went moved to the IPF because of lightning. But D. Lou, you're here with me. How you been? What's going on? Well, uh, it's my birthday, and you've got me here recording a YouTube video, so it couldn't be going better. <laughs> oh, man. The, everybody in the comments, wish them a happy birthday. But let's jump into a little bit of stuff. We'll be able to share uh, some of the footage that Florida State uh, has, and we'll give a little bit of scoop uh, about what happened uh, yesterday. But, you know, this is, you know, big for FSU. You know, you got a quarterback battle going on right now, and we'll talk about that here in a few. But like I said, it seemed like everybody, the pl game plan was to start in Doak and then it had to move over to the IPF. But, um, you know, it seems like quarterback battle-wise, both quarterbacks had a nice day. I mean, from what we were told, it seems – as if, you know, Jordan Travis has more of that consistency. That's what we've been hearing since the latter half of this last week. But, you know, Mackenzie Milton and like some serious game type situations, he's been making some plays down the field. And, you know, there's one ball that we'll show here in just a minute that it, um, he hit Malik McLean on last night, which was a gorgeous ball down the field. Yeah, I mean, that goes with what we've said uh, leading into the scrimmage. You know, Jordan Travis, he's had – a year in this offense that McKenzie Milton simply hasn't had. And he's had time to work with some of the skill players, not all of them, but some of them more than McKenzie Milton has. But it just seems like, you know, same with his strength, uh, same with the spring. I think as time goes on, McKenzie Milton, he's just going to settle in, get more comfortable. And, you know, it's going to matter who's playing their best football in three weeks rather than right now. Yeah, no. And going down to the first drive, from what we were told, Jordan Travis hit uh, Jordan Wilson uh, in the red zone there. We got a video of that that Florida State shared on their social socials that we'll be able to put on the screen right now. But that's something that is interesting to me that Jordan Wilson is really kind of in his groove right now. We thought more of him being an, a, a running, a run game blocker, which he will be a, a lot. He's going to, you know, Norvell, they're going to implement him a lot in that and those packages, but him down the field catching the ball has seemed to be working so far. Yeah, I believe he's a guy we talked about on Thursday for a little bit because during the first couple of practices, you know, he had showed off that receiving ability a couple of times. I think he had caught like two or three touchdowns um, leading into the scrimmage. And like you said, Logan, he goes into the scrimmage, catches another one. So, yeah, it's a nice surprise to kind of see him coming back from that injury and now being a, a threat – outside as well uh, as a versatile blocker. And, and that's just going to help with Florida State, those two tight ends, Cam McDonald and Jordan Wilson, to have two veterans in there that, like I said before, they're both versatile. They can help out the offense in multiple ways. And, you know, they're going to be relied on a lot by uh, the offense. Jordan Wilson is a big boy. I, I see Cameron McDonald. Yeah. You can see him to left, but that is a gigantic human being. <laughs> Jack, I mean, look, looks like Gainer's small over here. I mean, Jordan Wilson is has come in in really good shape, but it's good to see him though to start off the camp like this and be a, a threat catching the ball. And talk about these unis, man! I mean, gosh, these practice unis are so much prettier than the real unis. But we'll have another conversation for that another day. But the next thing here to talk about is this throw. This I thought was a punt <laughs> at first about how high this ball was. But this just drops right inside for Malik McLean. I mean, it, Malik McLean is just kind of just trotting, catching this ball. And from what we were told, it seems to be as if it was it was actually Mackenzie Milton who dropped this. And Malik yeah, McLean, it, man, I'm telling you. We saw it a couple times in the spring game, uh, Mackenzie Milton to McLean. And it seems like, you know, that connection just continuing to heat up. And Malik McLean himself, you know, a guy – that really seems like he's going to play a big role on offense uh, as a true freshman, which isn't something we've really seen out of the wide receivers the last couple of years. But I think a guy with his skill set, someone who can get down the field, go up vertical, 
um, in traffic, make contested catches over guys. There's a lot to like about um, the differences that he could bring. Dude, he's been like lighting it up uh, since spring and fall camp. Yeah. So I, I really am not going to be shocked to see him in the road rotation not even early on I, I wouldn't be shocked if he's out there which would be crazy like you said we haven't seen it in a long while as a true freshman but to see him in that starting unit against Notre Dame which would be extremely was that my impressive bold prediction I don't know I don't know if it was or not was, was it? it my fall camp bold prediction that there will be a true freshman wide receiver in the starting lineup I think it might have been I think that might have been you we'll I'm give you sure. <clears throat> we'll give you the re- uh, recognition only if it happens really We'll give you the recognition. But there's a pick here. Uh, Tate Rodemaker, <clears throat> both quarterbacks from what we were told, Trevor Purdy along with Rodemaker kind of had a up and down night. Whereas McKenzie Milton, this is actually, you know, we're just kind of going through things here. But this is actually a keen dent right here uh, with a forced fumble, and which is recovered by the defense. I think it was Kier Thomas. Yep, down here, Kier's got it. And Brownlee's trying to fight with him to get it. But, yeah, here's Milton handed off. And that just gets eaten up. That's Farmer right there. That's true freshman Farmer, 44. He's another guy who, you know, came right into Florida State as an early enrollee, had a strong spring, and is now kind of setting himself up in that defensive line rotation. Um, You know, outside of that, outside of Robert Cooper, Fabian Lovett, and um, Dennis Briggs, you know, there's a lot of snaps to be earned down there in that interior defensive line, and Farmer's in the mix to do so. Yeah, no, that that's a guy that I think <clears throat> might get some rotation this upcoming season. That he is a gym junkie. He's came into Florida State ready to rock, and he's put on quite a bit of pounds. What's – okay, so, yeah, okay, this is true freshman Hunter Washington there in 16, but Farmer's coming around here quick. And slings him down to the ground. I believe that was Sheffield. Yep. Handed out to Sheffield. Growth House with the kick there. It's a handoff from Milton to Corbin. Yep. Oops. <laughs> yep. Man out there. And Corbin, you know, we'll go through a little bit of scoop here. The rest of it y'all can find on our Patreon. But Corbin Delu absolutely won the night. You know, he was the best <clears throat> the best running back there. I think Tashawn Ward was behind him, but Corbin seems to be in his groove from what we've been told, which is a great sign. That's a veteran running back. And, you know, he finished off the season nicely last year, but he's had a great fall camp. But uh, last night he was rolling. He was the best running back out of everyone. Yeah, like you said, by all accounts, he had a standout performance and – you know, even though we heard some positive things about Treshawn Ward, it seemed like Treshawn Corbin was really just a level ahead of every other running back out there last night. We were told he scored at least one touchdown, which we just got to see um, there from Corbin. And, you know, he's going into the season now two years removed from that hamstring injury he suffered back at Texas A&M. So, you know, I think now being fully healthy – and having the time to recover mentally and just be confident and making those explosive cuts – that you need a running back to be able to make, you know, every time they're out there, that's just really helped him. And, you know, it seems like he's gotten comfortable in this offense as well. Yeah, no, which is great. This is Rodemaker here. This is a pick six for Hunter Washington, true freshman DB. I love Norvell right here. <clears throat> I was noticing this earlier today when I was watching this film. But Norvell's back here. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter Washington celebrating, and he did, Norvell just did a whole one one eighty and turns around, and that it looks like he's coming after us. Talk the chill out on the celebrating. <laughs> now he's about to have to go give Rodemaker the look. Yeah, about to give him the spring game look. This is a ball here from Jordan Travis, if I'm correct. Let's check and see. This should be Jordan Travis. Yep. To oh, now it's blocked. This is Jermaine <laughs> right here. I know, dang, I hate the play button being in the way, but it seems like Jermaine almost has a block on 
Jordan Travis here, but down the field, Keyshawn Helton, who uh, after last night, along with Malik McLean, Keyshawn Helton has been the most consistent wide receiver out of this camp so far. And you know it's pretty interesting. Look back here in the back. There's P Dub looking over here uh, at that play being made. And this is Oshawa Joshua Burrell right there uh, next to Keyshawn. But yeah, Keyshawn. Me, huh? <laughs> I know. I just, I'm crazy. That's one thing I'll notice the little things, but I know this is what he was wearing last night. P Dub was, but this is Burrell. You've got Keyshawn who caught the ball down the field. But dude, D talk about Keyshawn Helton because. We're hearing so many good things about him in this camp and this consistency and him being a electric, like an electric player right now. Um, it's a great sign for a veteran. Yeah, and it goes back to what we just said um, about Corbin. Uh, about Corbin, obviously, Helton, you know, he suffered a serious lower body injury about two years ago going into this season, two seasons removed from that injury. You know, last season, it just didn't really seem like he was fully confident and he could never really tie down his role in this offense. But I think now coming back and we saw some flashes in the spring, but it seems like things are really starting to heat up during the fall. He's getting back to that level of consistency, displaying that athleticism that we know he uh, possesses and is confident in himself again. Yeah. Now that's the biggest thing being, being fully, you know, feel comfortable after coming back from that injury. And that's, it's a great sign to see. And, He's a hard worker. He's one of the most hardest working guys in that locker room. So I always like to give credit there to him because I think he's such a good good leader in that room. And it, it'd be nice to have a veteran there. It's it's going to be crazy. You're going to have a most likely a veteran against Notre Dame on, on the side of the ball, along with maybe a true freshman with Malik McLean. Uh, that it's it's pretty fun on the defensive side. You know, Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas keep on. We keep on hearing names about them, along with Amari Gaynor. Uh, those three keep on impressing very early on. I'm interested to hear some more on some of the younger guys. We got to see Hunter Washington make a play on that pick six. Uh, Shaheem Brown is one name that, you know, we got to hear about last night. You know, I'm not going to spill out all the beans on everything because, you know, that's in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash null game day where you can find all of the nuggets. Uh, you know, d and I kind of put together a, a page page or so of uh, scoop that you guys can go check out there uh, 25 plus things with some scoop on here that we won't publicly share here on youtube but you guys can go check that out patreon.com slash no game day but uh yeah scrimmage one in the books i had to move everything over the t- there to the ipf but you know overall looking back at what mike norvell said he said he loved the energy and effort if you think about it their schedule was absolute insanity this whole week i mean Nor- norvell is really working the mental game with these guys i mean they had to practice in jacksonville that morning travel over to tallahassee and then at seven o'clock that night they ran a full scrimmage and you know norvell said he really liked the effort and the energy they had and that's a great sign you know having that crazy schedule you know it, it can't be easy yeah, I mean, it's just another piece of adversity that the coaching staff is putting on these players in the preseason to, you know, go ahead and mentally test them. So when they get into these high pressure situations during the season, you know, they're not just going to fold. They've been tested before and, and they're not going to back down. So I think it's smart by Norvell to try and mix things up. And I think also, you know, it just helps with team chemistry just to have all the guys go down to Jacksonville, have everybody together in one spot, no distractions. So that, that can only help this team. Yep. Like I said earlier, if you guys want to get the inside scoop on all of the details from the first scrimmage, you can join that. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash no game day. Only two ninety nine dollars a month. We can see you guys in there and chat it up. But uh, from here on out, uh, we'll be giving you guys updates on the rest of camp and into the football season and more scrimmage thoughts and observations. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you guys next time here on YouTube. <laughs>